nice uh, camp with friends waiting for sunset. Doesn't get much better, guys. It always obviously makes sense to do your scouting during the day. But honestly, and I have been doing that, but I just find it hard because I like to react to light. So I find it hard to have enjoyment finding potential comps and thinking about later on. I just find it so much more fun to react in the moment and observe how the light and shadows are falling on the land. So now is that time, the final hour of the day. The light is getting good. Now you can feel the inspiration and start to find potential frames and even get the frames. In the mountain valleys, sunset is not always the best time. Just depends what the light's doing and how it interacts with the landscape. Sunset's good when you have cloud to get the light and color on that cloud, but often it could be 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour before when it's really nice. At least when you cut some tracks in like this, it's easier on the way back. The light made a nice flow here of the landscape. It's looking for a way to flow and get the eye towards the peak. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Need to keep the snow clean, so we'll take a wide loop up the top here and then we'll try and look down the gully. That just looks epic. Nice shadow here in the foreground. Beautiful clouds as well. People ask about photographing snow. One of the main things really, in my opinion, is just let the light drop off at 90%. Then you have small amount of light on there with shadows. See here, it's happening. So as the sun gets on that lower angle, we get some depth in the snow. It's not just flat white, and it's obviously not too bright. It's probably another 10 minutes here, and it'll be just right. Look at that light. enjoyed working with those comps and you gotta in my opinion pull yourself away and not get stuck just shooting the same frame over and over easier said than done but whoa man the layered shot up the valley Woo! the valley looks down there just got enough atmosphere to get the separation. Funny how they rub their face on the ground.
right. I didn't get too much time in the field to talk. I was too busy in the moment and sharing their camaraderie, but I thought I could talk about some composition theory here for the two images that I shared in the video. This first one of this valley view, let's talk about that. As always, the main focal point I'm generally placing in the centralized part of the frame. So the main focal point for this one is leading through to the mountain back here, the beautiful layering and atmosphere. I put that in the centralized part so I'm not imbalancing the frame or throwing the eye off the edge of the image. A valley always works well um, with balance because you just often have the ridge lines and you can compose these to be flowing either side, which is what we've got here. So you can see again, everything leading into that centralized point. So what's the lower part of the image all about? Well, it's obviously a, a layered shot. Layers are how we create a sense of depth. And what really drew me in initially was just this frame back here. I did take a few images tighter uh, with the telephoto, just like that. It was almost just a little bit too simple for me. I'm just a sucker for adding more details and getting progressively closer and closer to the viewer, if I can. And it's always a balancing act if it's too much. In this case, I feel like it worked. The snow line here was to really just demonstrate that stark contrast of having snow contrasted, especially cool snow contrasted with the warm sky. So there's a natural contrast there and a bit of a balance going on as well. If you look at the ratio of sky to the ratio of snow in the foreground, then we lead through to this layer where you've now got broken up snow, but high details in these plants because they're closest Therefore, when we get down to this layer, it's obviously further away because we don't have any big details anymore. And then we roll right down to the valley. So really, I'm just hoping that we progress all the way through the frame. The light back here, main subject also back there. So everything should just hopefully guide us through to that point. Single exposure. I focused, I believe I focused right on the edge here. And then I just zoom and check. And if I'm sharp all the way through, great. If I'm not, maybe I'll focus there, check. If it's not, then I'll have to close the f-stop down further to 18 or 20, try again, or focus stack. And a focus stack would require focusing here, taking the exposure, and then focusing back there. Two would do because all of this is just on that same focal plane quite far away. I thought I would need a focus stack, so I was quite stoked when I didn't have to. It's just less work to do later on. I made sure a couple of minor details. This plant here was kept within the ridge. It just helps keep things separated. And I like these little grasses on the edge as well. So you can see the details all through the frame. It was interesting with the, the light on that snow it was very bright. I actually had to dial that back a little bit and it still is quite bright, but I decided to leave it where it is. It's just a natural kind of reflection coming off the sunset and then that gentle glow along the front here. So that's a rough composition outline for that image. And it was just a beautiful moment. And one of those ones that you can't really plan, you just happen to see it and enjoy that moment and try and capture it. And it's probably my favorite type of moments. Now, this one composition was not planned in advance, but shooting the mountain certainly was and going to this area to try and capture this specific mountain. Just absolutely beautiful and really just jumps off the ridge line um, very distinctly. So it makes for a good subject matter. You can see that positioning there, that centralized part of the frame yet again. This one with the depth, it's all about getting multiple layers as well. You can see now we've got plants here, progressing down, getting further. You've got the tree line below the snow line, this huge ridge which just juts out and then the valley floor down the bottom. So there's a good sense of depth because the eye just has so many points to end up on and it's all progressively getting smaller and further away, similar to the last image. What I liked about this particular point here was though the, the clean snow and then this gentle little S curve, very subtle, but that's just a beautiful little opening. This type of thing in composition is very subconscious, you know, the viewers not necessarily analyzing and going on that journey, but it creates a natural sense of flow, particularly this point here, because you're seeing that curve come around, that hook is almost pushing, it's a momentum thing. You have this plant here, which just tapers down. So you have that triangle, essentially that shape, that big 
to small. It's what we call the diminishing uh, perspective. You would have heard me talk about that on previous videos. So that was one key factor right here, the shapes either side, and then positioning this ridge to come along and stop there. And therefore, it should help guide the eye to the peak. If this ridge was stopping here, it would really be in conflict with the main mountain, the main subject back there. Got very blessed with some lovely light, so I've got that gentle light on the landscape, as you saw in the video, the natural cool and warm contrast, and really just ticked all the boxes and made for a beautiful moment to behold. I really didn't have much battery out there, so I didn't film too much. Um, like I said, just wanted to be in the moment. Hopefully you've picked up a few tips. It's nice just to share that little highlight with you and break that image down. So thanks so much, guys. Leave any comments or questions below, and I'll see you in a video soon. Cheers.